My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we thank Allah Azza wa Jal for having created us and chosen us for His guidance. Indeed, we ask Him to forgive us our sins and to make matters easy for us here and in the grave and in the hereafter. We ask Him to save us from the torment and the punishment of the grave and the torment and the punishment of the hellfire. We ask him to shade us with his shade on the day of judgment. That day there will be no shade except his shade, Azza wa Jal. And to enter us all swiftly and quickly into Jannatul Firdaus. We ask the same for us and the same for those who have passed before us. Alhamdulillah, we acknowledge Allah Azza wa Jal as our creator. We love him, we adore him, and we worship him alone. And this is why we are here today to worship the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. And as we are here in Trinidad, we see all sorts of craziness going on around us. And we, some of us, are part of that. You may be wondering, how come can we be part of what's going on? We have had some girls being killed, raped. And the latest one is this girl, Andrea Barrett. And we have a lot of movement concerning that. We've had five murders in one night, two nights ago, two days ago. Or five murders in one night, yeah. We've had policemen not attending the courts to give witness. Duck in the courts eight times. That was the headline in Newsday yesterday. So it's ridiculous. It's very ridiculous. And our society is decaying. And Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, ظَهْرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ لِيُذِيكَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ so facade, dal facade, facade, corruption, decay has appeared on the land and on the sea because of what the hands of man have done. So he will give them a taste of what they have done, perhaps they may return yani, to the truth, to Islam, to Allah Azza wa Jal. And when, our, when sins are being perpetrated and committed, decay would spread. And when there are good deeds and good people, there will be goodness and there will be response from the land that Allah Azza wa Jal would command. So whatever we are facing, Allah Azza wa Jal has given us a taste of what we have done. A lot of people blame non-Muslims for what happened to the Muslims. In the decimation of the caliphate, in the unity of the countries, the unity of Muslims, we blame non-Muslims, but we just have ourselves to blame because Allah Azza wa Jalla in the uh, Rasul Sallallahu tells us, "Taraktu fiqum amraini ma tadillu ma tamasaktum bihi ma kitab alayhi wa sunnati." I've left it for you two things. You will never go astray as long as you hold on to them, the book of Allah and my Sunnah. So. The more we hold on to the Quran and the Sunnah, it is better for us and we will not go astray. We will not be part of the problem of the society. We will be helping and we will be part of the answer of the society. And the more we abandon the Quran and the Sunnah, we will be part of the problem. Because we will go astray. And you may be wondering, well, we are praying our salah, Ramadan is coming in just under two months, and we're going to fast, inshallah, and give zakat, and read taraweeh, and read Quran. Yes, mashallah. But it goes beyond that. 
You see, when you have a structure and you have pillars that support the structure and the pillars are strong, but then you don't put up any walls and you don't put up any roofing, what is going to happen? So the pillars of Islam are not the only compulsory thing upon us. There are many other things that are compulsory, like ukukul walidain. It is haram to mistreat your parents. Big sin, big, big sin, to such an extent that the Rasul Sallallahu said, Woe be unto him, he who? One or two of his parents got old with him and he did not go to Jannah. Nothing about salah, nothing about fasting. It is important and they have to do those things. They are the pillars. But there are other things that are compulsory that we must observe as well as the pillars. Would you like to sleep in a house that only have pillars? Just asking. Just asking. So, are we part of the problem? So, one of the ways we can look is to look at ourselves. And I want to just speak about one aspect and you can take an analogy of that and look at others. How are you men at home with respect to your wives and your children and your parents, grandchildren maybe, brothers and sisters, how are you? And there's an accentuation with respect to how do we treat our women because this is very much in the news and we have to address that as well. We can't go along our merry way thinking that we're okay because we'll quote Quran and Sunnah and say, yes, I'm doing what is right. So just as a concept, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, Wallahu ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwaja. That Allah has created from amongst you your wives. So we get wives from the species of man. Not that we have a man as a wife, that's something else that's haram. Yeah? That's haram. But from the species of man, which includes women, Allah Azza wa Jal has created our wives. Women, not man. Or men, but women, they are our wives. And any man wants another man as a wife, he's sick. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَنِينَ وَحَفَدَ And he has created from your wives, children and grandchildren. Which means that a wife has to be a woman. Because only the woman, Allah Azza wa has blessed them to have children. They tell us in the hadith, Tazawajul wadud al walud. Tazawajul wadud al walud. Marry the women who are loving and who will have many children. Wadud and walud. Wadud means very loving. And the word that has been used, the formation of it, the scale of it, it shows an exaggeration. Not just loving, but very loving. And marry the women who are walud. Who will have many children. Because I will outnumber with you the other nations. So while the children are from your loins, the women have to have them. You see? And he's telling you, males, to get married to these women. Because with the population increasing, the Muslim population increasing with them, Rasulullah will outnumber the other nations. By whom? By the women having children. And he has given you sustenance from things that are good, which means that our wives and children are from sustenance from Allah, rizq. Wife and children. A rizq, they are sustenance from Allah Azza wa Jal because he has mentioned something specific, the wife and the children and the grandchildren, and now he's mentioning something that is general. Sustenance, rizq. So is it that you believe in falsehood? So is it that they believe in falsehood and they are ungrateful for the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal? Which means that if it is that we do not acknowledge that favor of having wives and children, 
then we are being ungrateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. My dear brothers in Islam, your wife and your children and your grandchildren are favors from Allah Azza wa, Azza wa Jal to you. It is from part of his rizq, part of his sustenance to you that he has given you wives and children. Are we going to be ungrateful for, for that or grateful? And if it is we are going to be grateful, then how are we supposed to treat our wives and children? Many of us, we get angry and nothing is wrong with it in getting angry. But what do we do when we are angry? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, and while information is being given, I want you to think of yourself. Every single one of you, think of yourself with what has been said from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And see how we are part of the problem. La yafrak mu'minun mu'mina in kariha minha khulukan yarudha minha akhar. That a believing man must not hate a believing woman referring to his wife. So a man must not hate his wife. And it means in a complete way. In kariha minha khulukan, if it is he doesn't like a particular trait of hers, he doesn't like how she behaves in a particular manner, radia min hal akhar, then he will be pleased with others that she has. As I say, don't sweat this small stuff. Yes, the women, they have problems. We have problems too. Anybody here is perfect? Any one of you can tell me for sure you're going to Jannah that Allah Azza wa is going to forgive you. But I will tell you. Inshallah, Allah will forgive you if you ask him for his forgiveness and he do your good deeds. And inshallah, every single one of you will be going to Jannah. I have that confidence. Because in the hadith, of Hadith Qudsi, Allah Azza wa Jal says, I am according to how my, my servant think of me. I believe that. And I believe that if I make tawbah, Allah is going to forgive me because he said so. And I believe if you make tawbah, if you make repentance sincerely and honestly, you will go to Jannah. But do we know it as a fact? We don't. We have that belief in us. And this is what is required for us, of us, that we believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is going to forgive us. We believe that he will enter us into Jannah. We believe that he will protect us from the punishment of the grave. We believe that he will shade us with his shade on the day of judgment. We believe that we are going to Jannah to Firdaus. We believe. So here's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From Abu Huraira, he said that the Messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal said, Atadruna al mal muflis. Do you know who is a bankrupt person? You know, one of the schemes that a lot of companies play is that when they owe a lot of debt, they claim bankruptcy and they get away. So Rasulullah is asking, Do you know who is a bankrupt person? Kalu al muflis, fina, man la dirhama lahu wala mata. Is a person who amongst us, he has no money. No goods. He has no dirham. Dirham is the silver coin that he used at the time of the Prophet. So it's a reflection on wealth. And he has no belongings, no mata. Fakala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's the bankrupt person, even in our times. But the Prophet, he said, in al muflisa. He said, a bankrupt person, man, min ummati from my nation, yati, yawm al qiyamati bi salah. He will come on the day of judgment with his salah, with his namaz, with his prayers. Was siyam and his fasting, was zakah and his charity. Wayati kat shata mahada, but he came and he mocked this one. Wakadha fahada, and he falsely accused that one. 
Wakala Malahada and he took the wealth of that one. Wasafaka Damahada and he caused he caused the blood of that one to flow. Wadarabahada and he hit this one. For your tea, for your tahada min hasanati. So this one, any one of them, will be given from that one, that man who came on the day of judgment with his salah and his fasting and his zakat. Good deeds will be taken from him and given to the one that he wronged. Wahada min hasanati, and the other one will get from his good deeds as well. Fin faniyat, but if his good deeds are exhausted and he has no more, understand. He has no more. His good deeds are no more. Fa faniyat hasanatu. Qabla niqda ma'alai before. Whatever is on him has been recompensed to the others. Ukida min khatayahum fa turihat alai. The evil deeds from the victim will be taken and put on him. Thumma turiha finnar. Then he'll be thrown into the fire. Your wives and your children are from among the people that belong to the, to the category of victims. Your wives and children and your grandchildren, your sisters, your mothers, your parents, and your neighbors and all that, but we're concentrating on the women folk around us specifically. We want to talk about that. And our children, they are from among the victims. They can be counted from among the victims if you do. If we do these sins and these abuse to them. Frightening, eh? We go home and we behave like normal. Whatever normal is. Well, what is normal? Well, tell, tell me what is normal. What, what is your normal when you behave? How you behave with your wife and your children? The wife's behavior to the men. We'll talk about that some other time. But this is present. This is the problem here. Because we know that Rasulullah has spoken about two discrepancies concerning the women. Two discrepancies that Allah Azza wa Jal gave them. One, there are sometimes they can't pray and they can't fast. And two, in many instances, two women have to equal one man in witnessing. Because they are very emotional. Yeah? These are two discrepancies that Allah Azza wa Jal gave them in their nature. And in the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us, bin nisai khayran. Yeah. He tells us, Istawsu bin nisai khayran. Treat the woman nice. Fainahunna khuliqna min dila. Because they were created from the rib. Yeah. Wina awaja shayin fi dila a'alahu. And the more crooked part of the rib is the higher part of it. It hooks like a hook and it comes on. So it's a metaphor. It's a reality and a metaphor. A reality and a metaphor. Meaning that there's philosophy in it. You know, some people believe that we came from animals. We were evolved. So it's okay for them to behave like animals. You see the philosophy and the psychology of what we come from is important to know. Where you came from? Where you came from? Anybody believe that it came from apes, then behave like apes. My Lord has created me. Eh? Allah Azawajal, Khalaka Adam, Min Khabdatin, Khabadaha Min Jamil Ard. Allah Azawajal created Adam from a handful of dirt that he took from all over the earth. So there are people come mixed with the philosophy of the earth, the metals of the earth. There are some metals, they drop some water on it. Psh, it dissolves and it, 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 it's, you know, it's very volatile. Metals. And anybody who chemist among us who knows about that can tell you some more about it. I'm sure there are people who can tell you about that. And there are metals, you have to burn it really, really at a high temperature to melt it. 
So one, a drop of water will cause it to react, another you have to melt it up to it to react and so on. Right? So people are sad and people are happy. People are white, black, brown, pink and between that. But if you believe you come from the ape, how are you going to behave? And this is how the behavior of people are. Because a lot of them believe they came from apes, so they're going to behave like apes. Alhamdulillah, alladhi naha and carnival. Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal, he prohibited carnival to happen this year. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. And because of that, maybe some goodness might be received and reaped by us. Because the evil that is carnival was basically shut down. So, she's created from a rib. And the philosophy of the rib, it blocks the heart, it protects the heart. Maybe that could be understood. That when we marry them, they are part of us. They are part of us. If you treat a woman, she's my rib. Subhanallah. You know, she, she, she protects my heart. Can you get more romantic than that? Yeah, you probably could say some nice words. My wife protects my heart. Eh? And Allah as well tells us in the Quran, Hunna libasul lakum antum libasul lahun. They are clothing and garments for you, protecting you, and you are also the same for them. So, we have to live in that philosophy because Allah Azza wa Jal chose that method so that we can come on this earth. Don't you think he had the power to say B, B, B and we don't even have to have a, a sperm and an egg joining that we could be. Yes, he could have done that if he wished. That every single one of us is a separate new creation in that. He just said B and we appear. B and we appear just like Adam. He created from dirt. If he wanted, he could have created every single one physically from dirt. And don't have our parents, our mother doesn't have to go through the problem of, of, of laboring and so on. Yeah, but this is the method he chose. And just reasoning it, whether we understand it or not. If you go to try to straighten in the habta to kimuhu. If you go to try to straighten that rib, you're going to break it. It can't straighten. And if it is, you leave it by itself, it still have that bend in it. So treat the woman well. So they have their imperfections and we have ours. The thing about it is that if we behave like everybody around us, we are going to lose it. And if you hold on to what the Quran and the Sunnah say about the way we should treat a woman, we are going to be okay. So we may quote the verse in the Quran. Ar-rijalu kawamun ala nisa Ar-rijalu kawamun ala nisa The men are the maintainers and the protectors and the trainers of the women. Ar-rijalu kawamun ala nisai bima fadlallahu ba'dahum bima fadlallahu ala ba'dahum ala ba'dhum wa bima anfaku min amwalihim. By what Allah Azza wa Jal has graced some over others meaning that he has given us the mantle of leadership in the house. He has given us that. We are the captains of the ships. And because so that, that, is, that is coming from Allah Azza wa Jal. Some of us, we don't like to claim it. <laughs> when you're the leader, you are responsible. And you have to answer. We have to answer, my dear brothers. We have to answer. And because of what they spend of their wealth, وَبِمَانْ فَكُمِنَ مُعَلِهِمْ فَصَالِحَاتُ So the pious woman, the righteous woman, فَصَالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ حَافِظَاتٌ they are kanita, they are obedient. The righteous women are obedient. They protect. Fasalihatu kanitan hafidatu lil ghabi bima hafid Allah. And they protect in the absence of the husbands what Allah Azza wa protects, meaning that when the husband is away working, whether he goes for days or he goes from the morning and comes back in the evening, she protects his property and she protects her integrity as a wife, as a woman. Then he tells us, and we love, we love to quote this. 
and those women whom you fear that they will usurp your authority they'll be rank disobedient and I always like to say not that you tell them to cook the duck and dalpuri and she cook bygan and rice and you're angry with that no not because of that it's because she disobeys you in a macro way not in a micro way a woman doesn't have to iron your clothes all the time she could occasionally and she could all the time if she wishes but if you tell her in a particular way don't do this because it is dangerous or it might expose you and she does then that is the disobedience and everything the husband asks her with respect to what is compulsory she disobeys this is what is meant by no shoes she usurps the authority of the husband she wants to behave as though she has the authority and goes against all the decisions that are made so there's a procedure that the quran has given us then counsel her warn her if you can't counsel her carry her for counseling my dear brothers you hold back when you should go and get help if you cannot deal with your wife because you are quarreling with her all the time and even cursing her and beating her because she's disobedient that is not the way and if you can't do it if you cannot counsel her carry her for some counseling and separate from her in the bed well, we know we have we ain't gonna do that because we want to be stuff yeah you know we have a problem with that part what do we and if that doesn't work then beat them not kill them not maim them or destroy them break their hands and their feet beat them and the explanation of it i think by ibn abbas is that you take a miswak and you give them some blows on your feet on your buttocks so it's not blows it's not blows to to prove that you are Kyron Pollard or Brian Lara or whatever or kick them around like Messi you know Messi playing football it's not like that it's to give them a shame so the way we see men beating their women slapping is haram and if any one of you within the mosque or without, outside of the mosque, any of you is doing this, stop, then stop. Muawiyat ibn Haida al Qushayri asked the Prophet and he said, What is the right of any one of our wives on us? To feed her when you feed yourself when you eat and clothe her when you clothe yourself meaning that if you are buying clothing for yourself buy for her as well get clothing for her and you know the women they need more clothing than we and don't hit the face and don't hit the face and don't hit the face and don't disfigure her wala tahjur illa fil bayt and don't abandon her except in the house so that is the man who you like to quote that you follow and we will quote the best of the ahadith and quranic ayah to support what we macho men want to support so he's telling you this and the explanation of and beat them what ribuhun again is not fighting and coughing and ripping and smashing up phones and all these sorts of things that is manic behavior you're getting mad you don't have your own senses and foolish behavior an un-Islamic behavior that Allah Azza wa Jal is not going to accept. So tell me, when you do this to your wives, you go on the day of judgment and Allah Azza wa Jal, the best of judges, he takes from your good deeds and he puts on her. That same woman you cuff and you kicked. Is it worth it? 
Allah said in Hadith Qudsi, Ya ibadi inni haram to zulma ala nafsi. Oh my servants, I have made wrongdoing on myself, oppression on myself, haram. Wa ja'altuhu bainakum haraman fala tadhalamu. And I have made it on you haram, then don't oppress each other. In the Hadith of Hanzala, Abu Bak heard him saying, Na faqa Hanzala. He's referring to himself that I, that Hanzala has become a hypocrite. So Abu Bakr has asked him, what you're saying? He said, well, when we were with the Rasul Sallallahu we make a lot of dhikr and we remember Allah a lot. And from the time we leave him and we come home, we spend time with the wives and the children. So Abu Bakr said, well, the same thing happens to me. So they went to Rasulullah Sallallahu and they told him the same thing. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, waladhi nafsi biyadi. By him in whose hand is my life, law tadumuna ala ma takununa alaya indi ma takununa ma takununa indi. If you were to continuously be doing what you were doing with by when you with me, wa fi zik and in remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, la sawfat hukumul malaika ala furushikum wa fi turukikum. The angels will come and shake your hands on your beds. And on your pathways that you walk. Mm. The angel will come and shake your hands. Not destroy you. Shake your hands. You shake your hand, the hands of somebody when you are happy with them. Or you are meeting them. Or you are congratulating them. This is a congratulatory thing. Very good. Well done. MashaAllah. However, Yahandala. Sa'atan wa sa'atan. There is a time for this. And a time for that. And in another hadith, فَعَتِ كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّ Give every time or everyone its due. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we are different, we are unique. We have the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Quran and the Sunnah. Do not be caught up with what people are telling you that this is the way you should be. Yes, there are sometimes they are in agreement with what we say. And indeed, this movement of asking people to stop the violence against women, we are part of that. We want to be part of the answer. We have to be because we have the answer. How do we start? I don't want you to go on walking on the road and, and holding up placards and, hey, you know, shouting Andrea name or whatever. But I want you to change yourselves. Change yourselves the way you relate to your wives and children. So that so much that your wife will tell other women, nah, my husband will treat me like that. And she could big all you up among the women and other people. And they will say, I wish I had a husband like that. Can other women say that when your wife big you up in a real way, not in a lying way? Sometimes they big us up and they lie about us. Because they are ashamed of how you treat them. So if they speak the truth, and it is the truth, my husband will do that. Because he fears Allah. Yeah? Islam will spread. Islam will spread. There's one little story I'll tell you. There was a Hindu woman, had a daughter, young daughter, she was cross eating with a young daughter. And she came to a Muslim man who had two wives already. And the daughter is agreeable to it, and she's telling him. Please marry my daughter. Guy in 40 something years, 40 something years old. And she said, Well, why? She said, Well, I know how you treat your wives. And I know you'll treat her well. Yeah? That is what we want. That is what we want. My dear brothers in Islam, we need to behave ourselves in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah? And treat our women well. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Khairukum, Khairukum li ahli, wana Khairukum li ahli. The best of you is the best of you to your wives and children. And I am the best of you to, your, to my wives and children than you are to yours. And he referred to women as, as kawarir. Kawarir means glass bottles, fragile. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us all. Me make a strong, strong Muslim men and Muslim women 
so that we will understand our purpose on the earth is to worship Him alone. And that we will adhere to the Quran and Sunnah. And we will treat our wives and children and our parents very, very well, the best we can treat them. May Allah give us that tawfiq, that success in doing that. And forgive us and enter us in Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa lisa'ir al-muslimina min kulli dhamb. Fastaghfiruhu innahu al-ghafurur rahim.